Okay, we're good. So, um, yeah, do you just want to, uh, whoever wants to go first, just introduce you go yourself, you go. skin name, uh, everything you want to tell people about who you are, where we are, your relation to country, community. My name's that's a good place to start. What's that? My name is Doreen McKears. I'm a Nambar elder. This is my country, Nambar country. We're on top of our fish traps down here. And our people engineered the, the fish traps. Um, they're not well, they're heritage listed, but they're recognised as one of the oldest ancient sacred sites in the world. And we're very, very proud of it. Natalie? Hi, Wait. my name's um, Natalie Eastwood. I'm a proud Nambar woman. Um, this is my country out here. This is my beautiful elder. My, um, she mentors me to keep up the, keep up the fight for the injustices for our people. And, um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, my name's Jason, Jason Ford. Um, one of two children. This is my mother, this is my elder. I'm a Nyimba man. Um, first and foremost, I've grown up all my life on country. I've gone out of country for work, but I always came back home. Um, all my knowledge that I've acquired in, in regards to the Nyimba people and who I am and what my, what my role is and how I'm to behave is come from my elder um, directly. Over many years, I sat in observation of leadership for at least 20 years before I got to speak. Um, and, that's in a contempt, and that's in a contemporary setting um, to try and share what was best for the nearby people in our country. I've been taught by my mother. Um, it's been a, a long journey, and still a long journey, still a long way to go. Uh, we haven't, we're still not varying from our behaviour, even though it's not accepted in most areas in regards to the information that we, that we share. For whatever reason, it doesn't sit with the curriculum, and it's, uh, it's a bit controversial in, in respect, a bit like the voice, I suppose. Um, people don't understand it, and if they're unconscious of it, well then it becomes, a, you know, in a democratic um, society, it becomes a, we, you know, it becomes a problem when we don't, uh, you know, we, we haven't been given the opportunity to show our credible evidence on um, the ways to do things in country, um, and that's in regards to making decisions, continuity of culture, the protection of land, understanding what governs our people. Um, these things have never been properly documented. Um, we were, and I want to like, like say that we haven't really truly been consulted in regards, as Nimbar people, in regards to the voice. There have been dialogues where they've invited people. We actually had to go to Dubbo. We weren't invited. We wanted to know what was going on. If you remember right? We forced ourselves We in. forced ourselves into the thing. Into the conference. Into the conference, which was facilitated by New South Wales Lands Council. And at the time, they didn't like... New South Wales Lands Council, which is a, a foreign entity to Nimba country, it's actually an introduced uh, entity. It's got nothing to do with our governance. Nimba governance, it's a... It's a uh, and it's a governance model which has been supported by the bureaucracy uh, that was established by the, by the Australian government. And people need to understand this, that the only member of the New South Wales Lands Council, the only one member of the big New South Wales Lands Council which actually governs all the smaller lands councils is the Minister for Aboriginal Affairs. And he, he says yay or nay to everything. Now. These type of things we've had to deal with over the years. 
dance council, native title, been brought into country, supported by government, and it hasn't made anything better. If anything, it's made anything worse. It's diminished our capacity as custodians, Yimba custodians, to, to do what we're supposed to do as custodians. We were not allowed to maintain our fish traps, our fish, pen, our fish pens. We're not allowed to maintain them. We're supposed to do that. We have a cultural obligation to do that annually. Can't get done. So, <coughs> so um, why, why aren't you allowed to maintain your fish traps? We can't maintain the fish traps because of legislation that's already been put together in regards to water, environment, national parks, all those different types of agencies that have got legislation and, and that, are, that are showcasing what they say this site is. They don't, a lot of them don't even come from here. And they are talking to certain people in country, but they're unconscious. These people have been conditioned. They might be First Nations people, but they've been in the system for a long time. They've been conditioned to tick the box and to do things on behalf of their own interest, not the interest of the, of the tribe or the people or the nation, however they want to describe it. Even those types of descriptions, we say nation group, because we believe we were a collective of people that looked after a certain area, a large area, and a large area, a large amount of people since forever. And that's been taken from us by, you know, different methods, uh, I suppose, implemented by the bureaucracy. Uh, it's continuing. Uh, the voices is another, something, never come out of Nimba country, but nothing to do with us. Mm. Has nothing to do with it at all. The voice, and I was a voice advocate. I'm going to say this. I was, as I was going along with the flow too, and I was, but I wanted to do it for the right reasons that our people do get a say. And I was thinking that the Nyimba people were going to get a say, but I never heard nothing about Nyimba in the old campaigns. Nothing. Not one of my elders been approached. And when they are approached and they tell them what they say, they then try to ridicule them publicly and in any way they can to discredit them. And that's that's the that's one of the main reasons why I me personally, besides my mother telling me to my elder telling me that I can't vote. And I want to sort of just elaborate on that just a little bit further before we move on to the to Mama. The, re the reason why I can't vote is because it impacts, and this is what she told me, decision making which impacts other brothers and sisters from different nations is not my business. Never was, never has been. Can't speak for anyone else. I can't speak for any other country, any other area. And that's, that's law. And I've known that since I was a kid been told that since I was a kid. And if I want to be consistent to understand to, like to honour my culture, belief systems, customs and law, of the Nyimba, we cannot behave in a way outside that. We cannot vote in a democratic system which impacts our brothers and sisters where they're not fully informed and not fully consulted and, and we have the, the consensus and agreement to do so. So I can't vote even in the system and that's why I can't understand our leaders that are in Parliament that are actually saying this is a, a way to better things for our people. No, it's not. We do not have to change our behaviour to enact like the government we would have thunder well rivers. We don't have to behave like that. Yeah, Gregory was telling me um, even where they put this weir, the weir. that it sunk mm. a lot of the fish traps that were on the other side of it. Yeah. And, and, and see, this land can create privilege for people, all people. When they come here, this should be a showcase of Nimba culture. The only part of Nimba culture you can see 
that's present is our the remains of a, of a fish trap that has been managed by non-First Nations and deteriorated in the period of their management. Mm. It doesn't function the way it used to. And that's not because of us. Yeah. But this is the type of thing that people have got to understand. The, the non-First Nations people have got to understand what's going on here. The government does not have our best interest at heart in regards to any voice. Money's not the answer. It's allowing our people to behave consistently with their culture. Mm. That's yeah. what we want to be able to do freely. And they've taken that from us. Now we've got to go to a shop to get food. We can't go out there and get food. We can't even get food out of our river no more. No. We've got a fine. You, you get know? a fine? No, that's right. You get a fine when you yeah. get the fishing. You can't, you can't catch the fishy no more. Like you catch, yeah, there's, there's all carp. Yeah. There's no black brim. There's no catfish. There's, there's no, no, cod. no cod. No yellow, no yellow, yellow belly at the moment. Oh, water quality's been destroyed, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Totally. But, yeah. but, Duncan, like, what I'm trying to share with the people that, we're, that you're going to share this with is that what they're hearing in the media is not grass, not coming from the from the nations. The nations themselves, right, have not been consulted through this process. It's just been a, a, a process to push the agenda of the voice through the platform of the New South Wales Aboriginal Lands Councils and whoever, whatever high profile people they can get, without understanding the impacts on First Nations. We've already been impacted, you know, and we're, we're suffering the side effects of it now. Yeah. You know, can I ask, uh, why do you think that um, constitutional recognition seems to be such a bipartisan goal? It, I think that's a bipartisan goal, and this is only this. I don't know much. I can't really say what it is, but what they're what they're thinking. But I would say, I would say, this is me personally, and I can say this from experience. When I try to do things from a Nimba perspective with the government. They just say it doesn't fit in our scope. Mm. That's the exact response I get. Mm. We don't want to know about that. That's in the collection of information, Nyimba audits on our country, nothing. We're not allowed to do it. Mm. They want us to go through their mainstream way so that they can hide things instead of us allow, allowing us, the Nyimba people, to tell them where they're going wrong. And they know where they're going wrong, but it's money that controls things. There's a lot of money that's been made here, cotton, on this river. This is a national area. This is a this is their area. Where they where they where they've came out come out here and made a lot of money. And our people are not to be included and to listen to. And that's what they're saying, pretty much. You got even though we have seven councillors here on council, local government, First Nation councillors. Okay. Our voice still is not being the, the grassroots Nyimba peep and not being listened to. We don't get a platform at local government. They don't listen to us. They don't listen to us at state government. They don't listen to us at federal. Yeah. And that's why in, initially I wanted, I thought it might have been an opportunity for the Nyimba to have a voice. Yeah, a lot of, right? a lot of people think that uh, this is a chance for Indigenous people to be listened to. That's right. And I thought that too. Yeah. But from my experience, and I'll tell you, and I'm going to give you a look, they set up lands councils for us to have a voice. They set up native title for us to have a voice. doesn't matter what narrative they got. And I'll give you an example. In the native title process, you've got white solicitors, white anthropologists. If we tell them something, they say, oh, no, no, we've got evidence of this here, this here. I said, I don't care what evidence you got. These people are not part of our claim. Mm. Area. But because they think that they're married in like white people, they have a claim there. See, the women, you must be Nyimba if you come through the women's line. That's it. Mm. My children are not Nyimba. Mm. Yeah, right. My sisters are. Mm. Yeah. And I'm telling, until people understand that our, that our social structure is different than what mainstream does. You know, our way of doing things is different. Oh, one of the uh, 
criticism that I hear sometimes is uh, the people think it's a very patriarchal. Yeah, well, that's so. totally not for the Nyimba. Mm. I'll tell you now, the Nyimba people, you must you must come for your mother's life, and that's unequivocally. That's documented, and that is documented because they're the, and this is the cultural reasons why. There's two reasons why. The DNA, you can prove it through the woman, you know where they come from. They carry the they carry the baby. The baby, the woman is the only way for the portal for life. That's where they grow. That's where they learn. That's where the DNA and your culture comes and is embedded in the DNA of the of the child, in the mother, and when it's ready for it to come, the child has already got it with them. They understand it. And they control the environment, the women. They always have. They always have if they've been fruitful. Yeah. The women have always controlled the environment in First Nations people. They played their role not only with the family groups, they played it in the marriage, they played it with the ceremony, a lot. Law, especially in our country. The women run the... Men, the men didn't... That the men have to do it, look after the rivers the way the woman wants them to. They're not disrespected. That's why we've got to behave that way. Not because of man. Man hasn't got the heart like yeah. the woman. We've got to learn from them. And until the men sit down and listen properly to the old women, that's when they're going to get it. And I think through the, through the voice, through the voice, if it goes ahead, it's going to do a terrible lot of damage. Why is that? Um, well, I mean, I believe that you know, they're diminishing our cultural heritage and my cultural stance of who I am, my identity, my true authentic identity as a Nambar woman. Um, what are we going to be classified as? Or, or identified, I should say, identified in, in the Constitution. Who, what are we going to be identified as? Am I going to be identified as an Aboriginal? Or that's a not who I, or that's a who I am. That, that, that will be enshrined in the Constitution yeah. forever, forever. Yeah. And if we adhere to that, any First Nations persons, okay, who agrees with that, is is diminishing their own cultural well-being. Because we come from nations, different nations, over 400 different nations, possibly more. I'm not quite sure, but I know that there's well, well over 400. So what do you see as the way forwards? Towards... I think as a way forward, we, we should be uh, able to be uh, identified you know, through our own nationalities. Yeah. Um, nation building should start uh, to be implemented and put in place. Restoration of nation building. Um, uh, it's exactly what Jason said. We can't have other people speaking for us because they're unconscious to, the, to, to, to my needs as a Nambari elder. They don't know my law. Wiradjuri people don't know my law. Bomaroi people don't know my law. Um, Barkindji people don't know my law. We know our own law. Right. Wind. <laughs> and yeah. we should be yeah. able to uh, express those things and be able to, you know, start putting those processes in place because I believe that that's the, the process that's going to empower our children. Nation building. Nation building and knowing who they are, that true authentic identity needs to be implemented and then we can, our kids will be able to participate in society as others do. At the moment, they, 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 like we were talking today, they reject it. They reject all this here. Who? who? The children. The children, they reject oh, the, yeah. the, the, and, and, and the adults. They reject it all because there's uh, no the empowerment process within their spirit. They, are you saying they reject the colonialism? This is the colonial system, yeah. yeah. They, yeah. they reject it. And, the, you know, our kids aren't being educated. Our kids aren't being educated. They're ticking the box for the, for the, for the statistics, OK, of attendance to suffice the agenda, OK, of the... Of the of the wages, okay, for the people, okay, or the or the academics and things who come out to these areas. And, well, I'm speaking about Nambar country, okay. You come to Nambar country, and in reality, they're not really uh, caring about the kids. 
or otherwise, you know, you'd see that the, the fruits speak for themselves. You know, none of our kids are being educated. Well, they stop yeah, educate. Kind of practice at school. What's that? When I was at school. Yeah. I, <coughs> me and my sister was there, and my sister said, "Can you help me, brother, with this?" Culturally, I must. We learn from one another. To share and care for. To share. And the teacher pulled me up in front of the whole class and wrote on the blackboard, I deplore cheats and made us as if we were bad people before for actually practicing our culture. And I had that happen to me when I was going to school. See, they don't understand that we learn from one another in, in regards of when they take them for a ceremony, they don't just take one. They take a lot for all them young boys, all the young girls together. They all learn together. And I'm telling you now, the education system environment, that's just one example. Wondering, they're wondering why we're failing. Because they won't let our people, uh, they won't let our kids do their cultural practice, which is the copy of one another. That's what you've got to do. And this is what they don't understand, these, these, these fellas writing the curriculum. And in the way, see, it comes back all back, Duncan, to behaviour. Now, why are our people not, they don't want to behave like that. They don't want to destroy the river. They don't want to destroy the land. They don't worry about money. They couldn't care less. That's why when they get money, they just give it away and spend it. They can't care. They'd rather be doing their own thing. Because you only get one dreaming. And why should we be why should we be condi conditioning ourselves? We, our people are becoming more conscious and more conscious. Yeah. And they know that these people are conditioning them. They know it's not right instinctually. Mm. They know that. Mm. They know it's not right to treat the water like that. They know it's not right to treat the land like that. Yeah. That's instinctual knowledge in their DNA. A good example, like hey, Jason spoke of earlier about the top-down approach, uh, uh, institutions, okay, or whatever you'd like to call them, like the land council and, and the Nets Corp and things, but I'll speak on the land council. The land council is put, okay, and, and plunged into Nambar country here where the membership allows to dominate, okay, the traditional owners if, 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 the, if, if the traditional owners are the minority. If we're the minority, which is which is happening here, we're the minority, but with all the the, 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 the placements that okay, came from nations from other countries, they come in here and they speak on on behalf of our land, you know, the other nations, and that's so wrong. Yeah. That's culturally wrong, and uh, I, 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 I I can never even attend the land council. Well, they're adopting the behaviour of the oppressor. And our and our black people and our black people are doing the same thing. They 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 they're allowing. Okay, but I think it's through their unconsciousness yeah. of all the the processes that have uh, that have been uh, that they've been conditioned under. Yeah. And I think that they need to be awoken. You know, through talks like this here, where we're able to have these debates and things and. Uh, and, and, and talks in reference to, you know, how did we get here into this mess in the first place? How have we gotten into this mess? Why are our children suffering? You know, Pauline Anson said, you know, we have created our own perpetuating hellhole. We haven't. That's been inflicted on us through history and circumstances. Yeah. And nobody's given a damn about it to have discussions about it. You know, we need to be, make sure that you know, our kids are doing the right thing and things, but how can we do that when they've got so many distractions, you know, out there in community and things, yeah? You know? And uh, where, where other people are telling them uh, things against what the elders want to tell them, yeah? If, if, even the, like if, if, if the young people and things, they're going to the land councils and things and they're being brainwashed, okay, that that system, okay, is the appropriateness of culture. No, it's not. Net's call. We have a blanket claim, okay, on, in our in, in our country here. Yeah. I have asked Net's Corp to specify the boundaries, okay, of those four nations, and they won't do it. They you know, can't. so I've gone ahead and put an injunction into it, and I still haven't had any results back yet. You know, they're still going forward with it, and uh, <clears throat> I, as an elder, 
you know, they're saying that the, the, the boundaries run to halfway through the river here. <laughs> Honestly. Yet now by country, okay, is in the blanket claim and it goes on much, much further than that, you know. And especially it should include the whole of the river because that's where our fish traps are down there. So, you know, there's a lot of things to, to, to talk about and things, you know. But getting back to the voice, I believe the voice, okay, is being instigated, okay, by people who are the black bureaucrats yeah. who are sufficing, okay, their own agenda for the, the almighty dollar. Because, I mean, the, the majority of those ones that are in there now and who are saying that the voice, uh, everybody should be voting yes, they're the ones who have been in there for over 40 years and they've done nothing for their people. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing at all. They don't see what's happening out in these communities with our kids and things, you know? Um, it was mentioned and before us. about nation building as, as <coughs> a, a better way forwards. Nation building is the only way forward. Nation, so what nation, do you what do you see as nation building? What is what is nation building? Nation mean? building to me is restoration, okay, of our of our languages, rest of, of individual languages, I may say. Uh, our, our 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 identity, our nation, which is our nationality, understanding, okay. We may not be able to go out and live like we did before, but knowledge and understanding gives great empowerment within the spirit. To participate, to 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 uh, talk, okay, uh, in reference to progress for our people on country. And what does progress can I, can I on country you, mean? Just, yep. just what you were saying up there, what, what, what is uh, nation building? Yeah. It's understanding our culture. Yes. Mm. See, that culture is made up of three things: beliefs, customs, and laws. We ain't got belief systems. If we give our belief yeah. systems away, that takes away our new behaviour. How yeah. we behave. Yeah. So, and it comes back to again how we, our relationship with the land, the sky, the wind, the fire, everything that we did to make sure that this country was looked after and our people. So, were so after. practices on country, being able to practice culture on country. Well, 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 the, well, main, the main thing, the main thing is water. Yeah. Well, I, Before us, that's what keeps us alive. That's it's right? the main thing, isn't it's it? Water. Yeah, now well, it we can't even have a say in our, what quali type of quality of water we, what we expect to come for our country. Now, if we, and you've got to remember, New South Wales, and this is what people, there's 13 different water resource plan areas in New South Wales, and that's surface water, and that's without the, that's surface water, ground water, and fractured rock. And people don't even know this. Every bit of water has been allocated, even rain, by this government. Mm. To make money. Mm. Now, if we're not, if we're, if we're to, you know, behave in a way which is culturally appropriate for the Nyimba, we want to be able to have a say in this water because we've always had a say in it, how to treat it and the river system and the and the natural infrastructure. No one looks after the natural infrastructure. Who does that? They go and look after roads, yeah. billions in the roads. How much into the into the natural infrastructure? Our totems, our birds, our, our animals, the lot, everything that provided for our Nima people. Why, why don't we get to say in that? I think the nation building though too has That's got what a nation lot, building yeah, does. Yeah, I think the nation building has got a lot to do with as far as the spiritualism of okay, yeah. who we are. It allows each nation, okay, to be empowered, I believe, this is what I believe, to, and to, to be strong and proud and to understand that each of us, prior to colonisation, we belong to structures, plural, okay, uh, uh, sociology structures, okay, prior to white man coming in, that was a need to perfection way of life. It's about the understanding and to have that knowledge and understanding within your spirit. We know we can't go out there and live it as we should have been able to do and like our ancestors and like our forefathers, but knowledge and understanding, I believe, gives you uh, the empowerment. I believe that it will give our kids the empowerment. It will stop the confusion 
amongst each nation. It brings us back to the order so, to, uh, and, uh, the uh, and the respect to prior colonisation, to, yeah. uh, you know, really, because that's what we had. I believe, you know, and a lot of people have differ to what I believe in too. I believe for us to uh, be successful, okay, the way that we were for 60,000 years, maybe to 150,000 years prior to white man coming in, I believe that with our order of our sociology was so strict that we kept the rivers intact, we kept the billabongs intact, we kept the, uh, the, uh, everything intact and uh, adhered to what the Creator gave us, the gifts that the Creator gave us. Isn't, that's a beautiful picture. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's who we are. That's, you know, that's, there's, there's, an, there's no uh, uh, pretense. You know, yeah, and, for, uh, uh, a little bit of uh, storytelling and law that I've heard <laughs> here and there. A lot of it seems to relate back to environment and and uh, looking after it. Well, well, that's, well, that's, we how we, well, that's how we, well, that's we, we are. A, we had a duty of care and an obligation. Yes. Well, every, I'll, I'll give you something. I'll give you something to think about the rest of Australia to think about. You only got the same gift as us here, but you're destroying it. And you are taking that gift away from your kids. From the kids. Yeah. yeah. Not from us. That's right. I've already had from the... your children. Yeah, it's stealing. And the children deserve better. Who would steal from kids, eh? Yeah, who'd steal from kids? Well, yeah. this is a... We can't. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we can't do that. <coughs> yeah. Like this is this is this is the this is the the grave concern is the behaviour of the human being. Yeah. And there's the whole multicultural here in Australia. They're supposed to be. Have a look. Would you treat your country where you come from like you're treating mine? All well, these they probably Australians, do. <laughs> every new Australian, yeah. would they do that to their grandmothers? Well, they, all these, all exactly. these people in this country here. Exactly. They, they don't come from here. Well, yeah. I believe they that. are. They've been born here, now, and they're part of this country. Treat it like you treat your ancestors' country. Yeah. Don't treat it like. You treat now. You treat now. You're destroying everything. Well, I don't think it's the. I don't think it's the, it's it's the it's the it's the, um, the people who are doing. I think it's the, it's the construct, okay, and the the the, 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 the system, the okay, system. that's there, that's doing it. I think that they have created an unconscious process, okay, with people through the through the, 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 the ways that they do things, and our and all our all the people, you know, both. Both black and white have become quite unconscious to the fact of really what's going on. Mm. And we need to have these talks. These are the things. Yeah. It's not to put anybody down. Yeah. It's, 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 the, it's the progress our country, uh, uh, you know, not just Nambo country, it's all countries within our the First Nations uh, people that when we speak about countries, it's, we speak about each country that's an individual country. And we need to make sure that we're, we're looking after all those countries because of the poverty, okay, that's even up in the Northern Territory is just so, so, uh, so, so wrong. I mean, they're, they're out in the centre of Australia and they're living in, in actual devastating condition, you know? Yeah. At least we've got our beautiful river here, you know, that we've got to grace and, and give us comfort sometimes, you know, when we can come down here to, to, uh, and, and, and to leave our thought process, okay, of the devastation and the diminishing of our culture of what's happening and we can leave that behind we can come down here and we can rest and you know meditate and, and on, on on good things you know at least and the poor people up there in the territory up there out in the center center of, West, <coughs> of what i've seen on television um, is just catastrophic and a lot of um, a lot of uh what progressive demographic people that i get into arguments with sometimes um, say that's who the voice is for essentially is you know they talk of closing the gap um, can I say I need to say something the, the, the bigger picture of, of the way that I see it from, from my perspective is our people are just a commodity I nothing is just a commodity yeah. a money making tool Okay, so do you mean in, in terms of uh, like virtue signaling? Stimulate the local economies. So you see, what happens in Brewarrina, predominantly 
90% First Nation. Who makes all the money here? Not First Nation. Mm. Yeah. We don't benefit from it. We don't benefit from nothing. Yeah. yeah. And even the services are poor services, I would say. Mm. That's just personal. Some people might say it's a good service, but I don't. Yeah. I don't think it's a great service here for my people. I look at the results. The results don't lie. This here, from the dropping off the edge report, this town, right, lost all the was the most disadvantaged in New South Wales out of 638 communities. Wow. They want to talk stats, Yeah. these fellas. That's the reality. And that's the reality. So when they're purporting that everything's right in Brewarren, in that's Yimba nice. country, it's, it can be fabricated because the dissemination of information only comes from who, who gives it. Who they listen to, yeah, and that what they and, and, to, and what they wanted to justify, justify. yeah, and the, and the results and the results the results are not matching, yeah. So if I was to say, when was the last time there was a cultural audit done here in regards to my people? Ask the Australian government how many Yimba people are left. They can tell you how many bloody frogs there are instead of Yimba people. Human beings. See, this is a, that, that's. That's the truth of it. And yet my, my children and my sister's children are not counted properly. Now, how are we supposed to get support from Treasury in their system to cater for our people when they don't include us? And that's why nation building is important. That's why we've got to... We, there's a number of different that's things. And, and so some of the things I... Hit, some of the terms I hear in terms of nation building and things like self governance, rights to self governance, rights to self determination. It's not about it's, it's not about replacing okay the the, the the not about replacing the, the, the processes okay of today like our, 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 our government okay. Yeah. It's about self governing ourselves on country, not to go against. It's about putting the appropriateness in place to, to, to progress our people and, our, and people who have been uh, banished from their countries to our country. Yeah. Through a lot of cultural uh, knowledge and understanding and through 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 appro the appropriate practices of culture. Mm. Don't you think? Yeah. About the appropriateness of culture practices. Not practices as going out and doing initiations and things like that. There, it's about up here and knowledge and understanding. And, here. and in, yeah, that's that's because our kids are walking around and they're so lost. They don't know who they are. They don't know who they are. If you would, I've asked growing up, so okay, what what nationality are you? Uh, 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 First Nations people, I'm talking about, and they say, oh, Brewarrina, Brewarrina, ain't it? <laughs> This is me, I never moved from here. Yeah. This is what's going on. And this is how they have tripled the the, 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 the people, okay? Mentally. Yeah. Mentally. Yeah, the, it's it's crippled our people. Because they're lost. They're, they're totally lost in a, in, a, in, in in their own lands. My people are. Mm. And, you know, what I effect? believe that, you know, it's only through research and things and history, the true history being told, that uh, we will all benefit in the long run uh, to make changes for the First Nations of this, of this, of peoples of this country, and to and to understand, you know, how beautiful their culture was, cultures, I should say, how, how beautiful it was. The intelligence, the if you, prior. If you was to go and ask a lot of the children in school, right? Our First Nation kids in school. Ask, come, get them to stand here and ask them to go for a walk around and tell you what the trees were. They wouldn't even know. They come down here and burn the trees. They don't even know. They come, they're coming down here in their resort and they're burning the trees. You know what I mean? Yeah. They were the ones, the kids were the ones who started this fire down here. Then it had to be, you know, come with the fire. But brigade. they're but adopting the behaviour. Of the oppressor. Of the oppressor. Now, they, what they've done is there's a shift, a paradigm shift from yeah. culture, our culture, mm. into the Western, into the new colonised culture. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I see it. Well, yeah. well, it is. It's, it's, I'll tell you something now, brother. There's no word of a lie. I've mentored a lot of young black men into the system to tell them what to say. They're in high places. 
like a lot of them, when they go to tell the truth, they're frowned upon. Mm. No support. Because it goes against what the bureaucracy's agenda is. The, yeah. the bureaucracy's agenda is, is to control the masses and make money through the resources. Yeah. That's all it is. It's got nothing to do with this culture type of stuff that they say they're multicultural. Ask them fellas in parliament, do they know what to, Explain to me what the belief systems in each of the cultures are. Multiculturalism. So you've got, you got different faiths here. Tell me what they are and how they protect them if they're multicultural. They'll, they allow different new Australians to build their build their, their belief system buildings like mosques and all those different things which is great they get to I'd encourage that mm. that people keep their heritage and keep their, their and, culture and, 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 and why can't we? Yeah. Oh, we can't we can't we can't, we're not allowed to. We can't. And this yeah. is our country and yeah. that's wrong yeah. we can't we can't do that we can't that's so totally wrong right it's 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 and cult, that's a it's, it's, and that's it's, a fact. It is cultural genocide what's happened. The trauma that 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 that, that falls our kids and things is just so uh, uh, unacceptable, so yeah. unacceptable. And everybody should not accept that. Now I'm saying to you all now, please don't vote yes, vote no. And what do you think? Um, what do you think will happen if there's a no vote? The, if there's a no vote, I think that, you know, that there will be a, 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 a change, you know, if, if we can get a platform where this type of dialogue is being delivered yeah. for change, for true change, so, true authentic change. So you're hoping people will w want to know why? why yeah, want to know why, want to know why. Why, why, is, why is there so much uh, devastation with First Nations people? Why, why is there? Why is there? Because they're changing their behaviour. They're adopting the behaviour of the oppressor. See, they drink alcohol, they do drugs. I want to be honest. They gamble like them, mm. right? And what that they do? Why they do that? Because they just say, "Oh well, effort." Yeah, it's escapism. Yes, who, yeah, cares? Yeah, yeah. who cares? Yeah. Who cares? Who gives a rip? Who's, who gives a rip? They don't care. My, my, they my don't... baby's growing up. I mean, me and my knowledge means nothing to them. Mm. I could tell them. How to sustain this river? They'll say, "Oh, we'll put you in the water resource plan." We done a name by report. Nothing been implemented. We done it on water for them. Nothing. So what they do now? They go and set up a regional committee here with no, no name by people on it. Yeah, right. And implement our knowledge. And that's the thing that they do. And I don't mind if they do it, but they won't. They won't implement our knowledge about the water, or about the land, or about the respect how to speak in this country. Yeah. You dare not speak. I dare not speak outside my country. Dare yeah. not. No. Yeah, yeah. Dare not speak. Yeah. We dare not speak. I dare not go, you know, to Murawari country and speak out of, out of, out of country. We dare not. And how to behave there. We never behave out of line in country in matters in relation to custodianship. We never. That's our law. We, how do they? They are breaching the number one law through this process of the voice, first and foremost. Which is that they're Which not is speaking. To speak out of country. They're speaking for other people. Yeah. Yeah, they're speaking for other See, countries. the government's got to speak with the people properly. They got to speak with the Nyimba reps. Yeah. They got to speak with the Murawari reps. They got to speak with the Barkers, the Yalio, the Wonkamara, the Nyimba, the Wailwa, and the Wangai, all of them, and get their views on Pitch their and country. Jara people. Pitch and Jara, the, all the them, different ones. Right? But I'm only talking about the ones around here. Yeah, that's all. But there's so many more. But yet. Yeah. If you was to talk to the, you know, the average Australian, what I just said to them, they would they say, "What? Who's he? What is he talking about?" Yeah. He sounds crazy. But he, you know, they, they call all those different peoples with different belief systems, different law, different customs. They're saying 
we all Aborigines. We're not Aboriginals. We're not. It's a generic process. We're it's classified and we're branded like like animals, you know, through that process. And that's been passed down, okay, uh, uh, through the years to uh, diminish, okay, my empowerment, okay, of who I am. And that's what it's done. That's what it's done. And we need to change the whole thing. And, I'm, and we get back to the nation building. This is back to the nation building again. We must implement each nation's uh, processes. Res uh, and respect them. Re through knowledge and understanding. Yeah. Looking after country, speaking for country, uh, data collection on whether Nambas fair and okay, uh, all those, all those things. Spirituality. Yeah, the oh. spirituality so for, for all, but it needs to be done for each nation. But, but but the thing that gets me, they got all these different denominations within the Christian Church. They allow it. Yeah. Yeah. For them. Yeah. But not for us. That's what's allowed for us. You've got us. Church of England, you've got Lutheran, you've got Methodist, you've got, Methodist, you've got Brethren, you've got all these different churches here. Mm -hmm. Catholic, they're the main perpetrator. But at the end of the day, you go to a Nyimba, where's the Nyimba belief system? It's never allowed to be taught. Ever. And it's, and it's, I mean, if, that ain't, if that ain't a form of spiritual genocide yeah. and psychological genocide, it might not be physical, but physically, our people are rejecting the system, and what they're actually causing is a physical genocide. Our so people are, are a minority now. Our people are dying. So, do you feel like the voice is reducing the the voices of the yes. all the nations well, it's down a to it's a, it is. a symbolic yeah, it's Aboriginal the behavior voice of the, yes. of the oppressor? It's adopting the behaviour of the oppressor. We that system, how can we want to become part of a system that has done this? If yeah. you were to go, I yeah. think, and ask the, the Seriously. If you were to go and ask the advisory council or whatever it's called, the advisory panel, okay, what are they going to recognise us as in the constitution? The, the, it would be Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander. Yeah. And that's not who we are. No. And I'm not speaking for the Torres Strait Islander people, but I, I'm pretty sure that they believe the same way as I believe. If we were all to become enlightened and to become conscious of the fact that what's happening through the voice, okay, is, is, is going to be a forever genocide of me as an Ambar woman. Yeah. Okay? Because I will be forever and a day recognised, okay, as an Aboriginal. And that is just so wrong. I'm not a white man calls me that. My, that's, that's not what my 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 Your language? My language, my la well, my, my language, my nationality. My nationality is Namba. But we've been never we were never told that. We grew up with that brainwashing method, okay, of brainwashing uh, 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 and, and belief system that we were Aborigines, <coughs> and that was my nationality. I did believe that, yeah. but when I become awoken and become conscious of really of who I am, I'm the most empowered woman that you could ever possibly speak to. Yeah. You know? And I'd like to be able to, you know, uh, uh, put in place these conversations, okay, so that change can happen for everyone. Um, I'd like to. I just like to yeah. say my my thing on the voice is whose voice is it? That's my question. I'd like to put out whose voice is it? Because I know that it's not my voice as an Eamba person. Yeah. Yeah. I can I can say that. Whose voice do you think it is? Well, it's the elite's voice. The elite. The elite. Uh, who do you mean by the elite? The bu bureaucrats. The bureaucrats. Black and white. And the black and white. So it's a government voice. Yes. It's, it's got nothing yeah. to do with us here on the ground. And the way we want to behave. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's nothing to do see, with see, us healing. Healing? See, yeah. see, I, I'm, given, see I'm, a, I'm actually still today, 50-year-old man, right, still governed by something that doesn't come from my people. Yeah. Right? And they're wondering why we are not successful in their system. We don't want to be successful in the system. The system destroys our, uh, what we what we believe in. Exactly. Yeah. See, 
We don't want to be successful. We want to be successful in looking after what we're supposed to look after. But it's just, yeah. Yeah, but it's our not, families. But, but, but believe it's not just for us, though. It's for everyone. It's for everyone. Right. It's for the for the for the people who come to our countries, yeah. countries, okay, from overseas. It's for all their children, everybody's children. You know, the future, we, we can't just uh, accept this devastation out here that leaves our future generations, okay, of First Nations peoples and and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the generations, okay, of all the, the other uh, the people, okay, who have come to our country. We must protect for them. We, we had a mandate from our Creator so much more powerful than any government they're going to find out one day that not from us but from him of what they've done wrong of what they've done wrong and i'm going to tell you something my brother the mandate which we were given was the greatest mandate a man could be given and that's to look after what he's given us the gifts he's given us to share with to share with every human being and not to take more than we need that's right that's the greatest gift any man can have, or any woman, is to, is to follow your belief systems that has been given to you by your Creator. What are we going to do when that's gone? Uh, the, creator says, the Creator says that we cannot live by bread alone. But spiritually, we've got to be but fed. Spiritually, we've got to be fed with other things, yeah? It's not just with, you know, the, the, we can have money, we can have houses, we can have... But if we've got no water... What are we going to do? It's gone. That yeah. is gone. It looks beautiful. So the government really isn't doing a, a good job of governing. They no. Don't know no. The damn thing. They don't know how to govern. They don't, how can they do it? How can they create appropriate policies and guidelines? Okay, you tell me this. If they're culturally incompetent, yeah. go to the Oxford Dictionary and see what culturally competent, cultural, what cultural competency means. In their dictionary. In, the, in their dictionary, not my dictionary. They have got to be able to have true knowledge and understanding, okay, of what they're dealing with. Yep. For every culture. Yeah. So if, 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 if they, they and the, the proof's in the pudding, okay, yeah. the proof's in the pudding, <laughs> that they don't know nothing about us because they've destroyed everything look at, that we believe in. You've only got to look. Look at the environment around us, everywhere around us. Not just here on Nimba country, all other nations. We, we have a yeah. responsibility to, the, to everything that we see in our dreaming. Everything. And I think everything can work together, you know. I do really do believe that, but it's got to be done in the appropriate manner. My you know? own. And what is, what is the appropriate manner, do you think? The appropriate manner is working with the nation, nation groups. Yeah. Individually, individually. Until at such time, you know, we, got, we, we, we all see that a conscious vision yeah. of appropriateness and of truth telling that doesn't uh, camouflage you know so uh, the camouflage this 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 ugliness okay that's portrayed that we've created this yeah give the first nations people an opportunity to 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 create this i believe that's how i believe anyway and i believe that you know if we if, and if we if, if we're if the Namba people can do it and be role models for other communities, so be it. Yeah. You know, because I think all all First Nations peoples, the majority of our people, have been dispossessed by true knowledge and understanding. They've befallen to that unconsciousness of really what's happened, and through the processes, okay, that's uh, uh, pushed upon them, that uh, conditioning and things since. You know, I mean, it's only 250 years plus, for goodness sake, you know? And there's so much devastation. So much devastation. But the biggest thing is the injustice that they're doing to the children. Today, still. The children. What are they doing to the children? Taking them. Yeah. Taking Educating them. them wrong. Yeah. They educate them, they, and they're still well, going through this conditioning I, process. Like I said, eh, our kids are going through their education system, getting advice from First Nations people that are working in the system, they only working in the system to get a dollar okay, because they don't care about that system. Okay? And the kids are falling through the gaps in the, in the education system because 
everybody in there is unconscious of our, it, yeah. of how to do things properly. Yeah. And, and, and what they're doing, they're saying, oh, of course they see, see, see the environment today, people want to be people pleasers. Yeah. That's what they want to be. Yeah. They want to be liked. Mm. And of course everyone wants to be liked. Yeah. But how can you like someone that's doing this for your people? Yeah. You know? I, yeah. I don't know how many times my mother's welcomed the country. I said, don't welcome them. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've Tell heard them they're some... not bloody welcome because they're not welcome if they're going to continue to do this. I've heard there uh, that there are some Gomorrah who refuse to do welcome the yeah. country anymore. I don't do welcome the country. Yeah. I don't do welcome the country. We can't yeah. welcome them anymore, brother. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, we've welcomed them and they've disrespected the Nyimba people. Yeah. And at the end of the day, they're continuing to do it. And what they use, they use deflective methods to say that they're being consulted with the people and portraying to the broader community, Australian community, that they're doing everything right because they tick the box they've consulted yeah. there is a with, with, first, with First Nations people. There but, is. But the content and the context in the way that they do it is wrong. There is, a, there, is, there, is, there is an unconscious okay, expectancy okay, of society, meaning the system and the wider society of Australia, there is an expectancy of that society that we should, could, and would adapt. That you should, could, and would adapt hmm. yeah. to what's been introduced to us. Yeah. Without any support mechanisms put in place, spiritually, we without, can't. without any spirit, well, yeah, well, spiritual, all the spiritual stuff. Without any, you know, just without, there's just been that expectancy there that you will, you, 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 you should, you could, and you would adapt. It's failed miserably. Yeah. Our kids have, our kids haven't, we haven't adapted to it. Can we I? We can adapt to it. We will adapt to it, but we must be spiritually and culturally apt within our spirits to do it. And then we can have a voice, a, a proper voice, a proper voice that's going to make change for everybody, everybody. And that's my final word. Yeah. If they can't get this right through with the voice for the people, what hope do our children have? That's all I've got to say. What, what, what effect do you think a voice would have on the people? On, on your people. A voice? Yeah, what is, well, the yeah, voice man. to Parliament. Yeah, I don't, I, 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 in all honesty, it's not, it's not going to benefit the people that are on the ground, the ones that are out here in these remote communities. Why do you feel that way? Well, I, I live it. Yeah. I live it. Yeah. I see it. Because, so because of past experience? It's, a, it, it's continuing on. Yeah. And it's always the top-down approach. Yeah. It's never coming from the bottom up. So do you like, think... It's like a tree. How does a tree grow? You've you got to plant a seed from the ground. Yeah. yeah. Right? Uh, You've got to put that seed in the ground. Uh, and then when you water that seed in that ground, what yeah, happens then? It blooms. It blooms. But what they're doing is they're coming from the top, wanting to... Coming yeah. from the top... And squashing us. And squashing us down. Right. It's, it's, now, it's, it's, it's weird because I hear a lot of people say that um, the voice, the referendum, is a grassroots no, initiative. No, it's not. It's yeah. not. What? It's gammon. It's what? gammon from the, from the Yes campaign. And gammon means untruthful. Um, in this community, the conversations that you have with people, do you think there's generally support for it or...? Or what, what do you think? They don't converse with one another. And nobody converses here with another. They've wow. got silence, okay, written all over their foreheads. Right. I've Why do you think that is? The I... only ones who talk to one another are the ones, okay, who have been enlightened and who have become, uh, who have become unconscious. So people are uncomfortable to talk to each other I should say. about it. Yes. You know, all the other ones are unconscious and they're going with the flow. They're going with the flow. That's like the sheep. Right. They you don't want to step out of line. Sheep? They don't want to step out of line. They don't want to bite the hands of feet. Duncan, yeah. can I share an analogy with you? Yeah. Every animal has certain behaviour. Every they have a certain culture, which, they, which governs them. Like the fish, they swim a certain way. They nest a certain way. 
they reproduce a certain way for things to be sustained. The farmers, okay, birds, yeah. the animal, every animal. Our people, right, understood that. Now, they will not change their but when they put them in a cage, what happens? They won't breed. They're going to try and do everything to make them breed. They're sad. Their mental state's bad. They even say it there now. What the broader community, non First Nations people are saying, it's terrible what to do that to animals, right? <laughs> Take them out of their natural environment. No different than the Nyimba. We're an extension of, we're actually at the top of the food chain when it comes to animals, beings, live, living forces. They're living forces. That water's even living. And I'll tell you something now, you try and make it behave a different way, there's going, to be, there's going to be side effects from it. <laughs> Pushing something uphill. <laughs> yeah, and it's the same thing for our people, my brother. Yeah. You try and make our people behave in a different way, okay, they're going to reject it. Yeah. yeah. And be, you know why they rejected the first station? You know why? Because we were the first here. We believed that. I believed that. Yeah. My army created the first station's people first. And everybody was hybrid from us. That's what mm. I believe. Yeah. I truly believe that. And I'll tell you something now, the behaviour they should be looking at is our people's behaviour and how to behave with the land to do things. Not this unconditioned behaviour that we've been assimilated with. Mm. But look yeah. at what our old people did now. They looked after and created privilege through everything that they've seen. And they said, OK, that's, that needs to be treated special. It's alive. It's moving. It does something. It contributes to the welfare of everybody. Mm. The birds do, the ants do, everything does. No life without it. Nothing. Bees. Not one of us can live without a bee. Yeah. That's a fact. But do they behave in a way which protects that for perpetuity, like they say? No, they don't. No, they don't. What they do it for, they, they put together strategies and policies and legislation to protect things is their own interest on how to make money. Yeah. That's all it is. And and until they really, truly, truly look deep down within, every person knows. They don't have to be told. They know what I'm saying is true. It's the truth. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I don't need to be a subject matter expert in that's, that's been uh, authenticated through any university. I've come through the greatest university in the world. My people, there's no more. We've had gathered evidence for half a million years. You can't learn no more than that. It's you here. Can't. It's, it's, it's here within us. And we only want to share it. You can't. And we want to share it with everybody. Because yeah. that's the human yeah. right. And we must, we have an obligation. If we hold knowledge, we must share. And we must share that on how to look after this. Yeah, well, I guess a lot of. A lot of um, a lot of people I know would argue that the voice is a way of doing that. Well, they would. They'd argue that because they're unconscious. Again, but again, it's it's a it's a look. It's homogenisation. Again, you can you can do things a number of different ways. Yeah. As they say, you can skin a cat more one more than one way to skin a cat. Yeah. But what we're saying is not at the expense of my people's culture. Mm. Yeah, that's right. No way. Yeah. That's been here before they come here. Yeah. And we're not giving it up for nobody. And at the end of the day, why should we? Why should I bow down to what they want to call us? Yeah, we, yeah we should wrap it up. Probably yeah, we're going to lose life. Anyway, my brother said, thank you very much for taking the time to come to the Nyimba people. You'll yeah. always be part of our story, my brother. Thank you. I swear that there. Thank you. Thank right? you. Yeah, you. You'll be part of my story yeah, too. I will oh, be. Yeah. Never you. Man, you ever come to Lismore, you better give me a call. I'll be coming. Oh, we will be. Yeah, we will. Yeah, I'll don't get your worry. number. I'll come up that way. Yeah. yeah. Come stay with you, my brother. I can't wait. Yeah. That'll we'll be sit good. Sit down, have a good yarn, and yeah. I'll share some stuff with you that I've done. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. You keep that. in touch with us, I'll let us know. I will do. I'll get yeah. all your numbers. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a lot of networks. Well, I yeah. Can, yeah. I can catch up, hit you yeah. with like Gila. I know Gila well. Gila comes and gets advice with me, believe yeah. it or not. Yeah. You're the uh, one you know, you're the one who should be doing oh. Q and A. Well maybe.
Well, what do you what do you think of Stan Grant? I don't mind Stan. Stan's all right. Well, I think I think he I think he uh, he's, he's, he's come to he, he's come oh, to yeah. eat in like an hour. Has he? He's getting an awakening. Yeah, an awakening of old oh, okay. really. Yeah. yeah. He's come to it. But, but he's, I he's, think he's, he's got a long way to go. I think he's got a long, a long way. See, they've got a lot. You can't sit on the fence. Yeah. You well, can't. and that's uh, one thing for me that I did want to ask, because. Okay, so my first perspective on this vote is that there's 96.7% of non-Indigenous Australians that are going to be... That's what I wanted to speak about. ...that are going to be voting on this. And so in that, in that sense, those 96.7% of non-Indigenous Australians are the ones that will be deciding this. Yes. Not, not the 3.3% 3. 3 well, I mean, Indigenous. No Whose voice is it? It's, it's no different yeah. to what they've well, been doing for 200... The 96.7%, I guess. That's exactly right. And it's, but, Duncan, and it's no different to what they've been doing for 250 years plus now. Well, they it's say no the road to hell is paved with good intentions. They've been speaking on our behalf. <laughs> yeah, that's what they say. Yeah. Um, yeah. They've been speaking on our behalf already. And I, I, I guess for me, I thought, well, I, don't, I, I shouldn't have a right to vote. No. Why do I get to decide this? If, if this is about justice... Yep. Well, why do I get to decide this? Right. Why do I? Um, it's another guilt trip on the on the non First Nations people. people. See, see, this is another thing. See, see, they that they, they're not subject matter experts in this. Yeah, that's right. And and who is <laughs> someone yeah. like Gilla? You are. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. are. Yeah. 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 And yet, I feel really. I, when I went to see Thomas Mayo and Kerry yeah, O'Brien yeah. twice now, I've gone to see them. <laughs> not because I, yeah. not because I you cherish their words, Jason, but you know yeah, he's with the voice. Kerry O, oh, he? he's uh, Torres Strait Islander. Kerry O'Brien was saying, he's smart. there are no informed experts on on the no position. He oh. said that oh. to a room full of white people. I said, well, what about Gillard? You know, he's, he's the last remaining co-founder of the 10 Embassy. Yep, that's right. He's been a lawyer for 50 years, land rights activist for 50 years. Talks about a lady title, all that sort of stuff. Yep. He's a he's, yeah, he's L-O-R-E, -E, if I'm but, right, lawman. But, 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 yeah. but, there's a but. Yes. But he still calls himself an Aboriginal. He right. <laughs> no, he did not call no, no. And see, yeah. this is what I'm saying. Until we become enlightened, okay, to the real, true, authentic... Uh, truth telling, yeah. truth telling matters. Okay, yeah, it, it is the thing, yeah. and, uh, and that's when you become really, truly enlightened to everything. Yeah. And you will not question it. You know, and I've told Gilla, like I told you, Gilla was in my house there last mm -hmm. week up there, Manelli. Yeah, and I, I, I told him at a at a, a, a forum, okay, yep. where where he was uh, speaking, and he was on the stage and. He was with the old professors and things, and I said to him, you know, Gilla, what about us, you know? When, when, I'm not an Aboriginal. And you know what that old professor did when he come down off the stage? He come up to me and he kissed me on the cheek. It doesn't hurt to tell the truth. It doesn't hurt to tell the truth. Well, We've things got, got to start stop. with telling the truth, don't We've they? We've got to yeah. stop camouflaging our true, authentic identity. That is who we are. I'm a member... He's a, he's a, well, I think Yalia. he's a Yalia. Yalia. Yalia? Yalia. Yalia. He has Yalia. got to stop, yeah. he has got to stop calling himself an Aboriginal. Yeah. We all have to stop that. What does That's impress me important thing. is the Declaration of Independence. Yeah. And, and the, republics, the republics. The republics. Yeah, I think did that, Murawari. Yeah, Mur Murawari. And Yudinji. Yeah. But yet, but yet the ones who, the, you remember, yet the ones, okay, like Fred Hooper. Who's done it okay? Created that sovereignty movement okay with me. Yeah. Or whatever. They, what, what do they call it? Yeah, he still calls himself an Aboriginal. Yeah, he still, yeah. he's still I said, well, why do you, why do, you do that? Yeah, but they do, see, 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 but they do that because they, they, they see, they're. See, they're still. They, they, no, what they're doing, I'll tell you what they're doing. They're trying to survive and they make money over in this area. Right? They're still going to survive and the people they talk to. If you call themselves the LEI and stuff like that, you, they should be doing that. But, but what they don't have the confidence within themselves to, you know, to say, hey, I don't have to change my behaviour for you. I'm the LEI. We don't have to change our behaviour. Why, why, should, why should we all be known as a, this, this generic classification? Why should we be... I'll tell you why. You tell me why, go on. 
Just a white bird says. Yeah, well, that, that's, <laughs> that's, I, I, re 